The founders of Brakeline have spent years studying the evolution of equipment and methods used to service today's vehicle brake system. Finally, the answer is here. A way to produce the superior finishing characteristics of a bench lathe and the precision to eliminate lateral runout. You'll find the Brake Align Runout Correction Plate easy to install if you follow these simple instructions. To use Brake Align Correction Plates for the correction of pedal pulsation caused by lateral runout in the brake rotor, you must first ensure that the rotor is true, flat, and the sides are parallel. If the vehicle requires a new replacement rotor, it is not necessary to resurface a new rotor. The new rotor will meet all of the manufacturer's specifications right out of the box. Both new and existing rotors will require that the inside hat section is free from rust, paint, or debris. This is easily accomplished by using a die grinder or other abrasive. In this case, the rotor has adequate thickness and should be machined on a well-maintained bench lathe. Prior to mounting the rotor on the bench lathe, check to make sure all the lathe adapters are clean and free from any rust or debris. Make sure the vehicle hub is also free of any rust or debris. Your Brake Align Toolkit includes the J42450 Hub Cleaner. This is an excellent tool for cleaning the hub and has a hole in the center of the tool which allows the tool to fit over the wheel studs and clean this area more thoroughly. Install the rotor onto the hub. Hold the rotor firmly against the hub and secure the rotor using the supplied conical washers along with the vehicle's beveled lug nuts. Hand tighten the first lug nut. Using the proper torque stick, torque the remaining lug nuts using a star pattern to the manufacturer's specification. Attach the supplied dial indicator to a rigid part of the vehicle spindle. Make sure the vice grip is clamped securely by adjusting the knurled knob in the vice grip handle. Make sure the vice grip location is close enough to the rotor as to allow the flex arm and gauge of the dial indicator to make contact on the rotor's friction surface. Check to ensure the contact tip is tightened securely. The needle of the gauge should be contacting the rotor approximately a half an inch from its outermost diameter. With the cam lever in the released position, take the slack out of the dial indicator flex arm by rotating the knurled ring at the end of the flex arm clockwise with the dial indicator gauge in its desired position. With the slack taken out of the flex arm, a simple turn of the cam lever will secure the arm and gauge rigidly in place. In the tightened position, the cam lever should be in line with the flex arm. Lift the spring-loaded needle up off of the rotor a few times to ensure the tip of the needle is making good contact on the rotor friction surface and that there is no movement in the dial indicator or flex arm. Always rotate the rotor in the clockwise direction when checking for lateral runout. Notice how the gauge oscillates back and forth between the high and low points on the rotor. The lowest reading is the lowest spot on the rotor. Once you determine the low spot, gently push the gauge to bring the needle to top dead center or pointing towards the rotor. Then rotate the face of the gauge to set zero at this needle location. Rotate the rotor again to ensure the low spot is exactly at the zero setting. With the low spot now set at zero, continue rotating the rotor clockwise to determine the high spot. This is the location of the highest runout and note the amount which is read in thousandths of an inch. This particular vehicle is in excess of the two thousandths specification set by the manufacturer and we will need to correct the lateral runout using the brake align correction plates. Please note we have found six thousandths of lateral runout and need to mark the rotor in the exact location of the high spot. Rotate the rotor again clockwise and stop the rotation when you reach the highest reading. Where the needle contacts the rotor is the exact location of the high spot. Using the supplied marker, mark this location on both the rotor and the closest wheel stud. Marking both points is very important. Pivot the dial indicator out of the way. We have found it helpful to rotate the rotor to bring the high spot to top dead center or at 12 o'clock. Using the brake align application chart, locate the year and model of the vehicle you're servicing. This 1999 Seville STS will use an 801 correction plate. 
The XX in the part number indicates the amount of taper or correction. The correction plates are available in three correction increments, three thousandths, six thousandths, and nine thousandths. Since we have six thousandths of runout, we will select an 801-06. Once the correct plate has been selected, remove the rotor. As you look at the hub, you see the wheel stud that was previously marked on the location of the high spot. Note there are 10 holes on the plate that will allow you to align the plate even in instances where the high spot is in between two wheel studs. The correction plate has a V notch on the inside diameter. Install the correction plate onto the hub, being careful to align the V notch of the plate with the marked wheel stud that indicated the location of the high spot. Reinstall the rotor exactly as you took it off, lining up the markings on the rotor with the marked wheel stud. Be careful to hold the lower half of the rotor securely against the hub. Using the conical washer, hand tighten one of the lug nuts. Now install and torque the remaining lug nuts. Pivot the dial indicator back into position onto the rotor. Turn the rotor clockwise and remeasure the amount of lateral runout. The total amount of runout is now well within the manufacturer's specifications. We recommend that both rotors remain secure and on the vehicle hub until the calipers have been reinstalled and brake pedal pumped to fully pressurize the brake system. Please note to never use more than one plate per side and always measure the rotor after machining to verify thickness. Never attempt to reuse an old correction plate.